What's going on, Adventure Fam? Welcome back. Happy Thursday. Hope you're having a fantastic day. It's a beautiful day here in Arizona, and uh, we're hoping that the weather starts to turn a little bit and become a little bit more crisp and uh, fall-like because it's still a little warm. We're going to be breaking 100 still, and uh, we're almost nearing the end of September. Nothing, no, It's nothing out of the norm for us. We're always pretty warm until end of September, beginning October. But uh, kind of hoping that we break a little bit sooner than later. Um, ready for that fall weather to start kicking in. And um, yeah, just ready for that fall weather. How's the weather back where you guys live? Um, not sure where you're watching from, but uh, let me know down below. How's the weather where you live? And I uh, hope you guys are having a fan. Fantastic day. Well, hey, listen, I'm going to make this short. I'm going to make this sweet, but uh, I want to talk about a story that I came across with Norwegian Cruise Lines. Yes, came across a uh, story for Norwegian Cruise Lines where, um, you know, passengers are just not happy. Passengers that are sailing out of Europe, uh, they they are not happy right now, and let me tell you why. So when you go on a cruise and you're booking your cruise, right, you know that there's opportunities to maybe book an all-inclusive dining package or even an all-inclusive drinks package. Um, really, you know, I've never personally booked a drink package. I don't really drink that often. Uh, Sarah doesn't either, so we just kind of buy a la carte if we're going to have a drink because we wouldn't get our money's worth. But if you drink a lot or people that drink a lot, uh, they, they, they tend to splurge on these drink packages because it ends up being cheaper in the long run. And so um, what, what's happened now with NCL is they've got this all-you-can-drink package. And uh, it, it's an all-inclusive drink package that they tout um, with all of their sailings. And uh, it's, no, it's, no, it's not much different than any other cruise line where they offer a drink package. There's some rules and regulations and stipulations around it. But for the most part, you do it so that when you're on board, you're not having to you know, a la carte and you're not left with this big drink bill at the end of the, you know, at the end of the cruise, right? So it's it's a lot more convenient. So Norwegian calls this their free at sea package. It's their all-inclusive drink and internet Wi-Fi package and they call it the free at sea package. Now, what customers are really angry about, what passengers are really angry about is that this package apparently doesn't apply to all bodies of water in which they're sailing. And so they're getting charged an extra tax on top of their drink package cost. Now, these drink packages range in cost, uh, you know, depending on kind of when you buy them and, you know, the length and all that stuff. But passengers who have paid hundreds of dollars per person to have this free at sea package are now finding out that when you're sailing in the Spanish waters off of Spain, there is an additional tax that is being um, assessed to these passengers um, in addition to the drink package they've already prepaid for. Now, what customers are saying is that their cruise that leaves out of Spain and ends up in Spanish territorial waters, even though you've prepaid for your package, they're now being assessed a 10% VAT tax on top of their prepaid purchase. So what is a VAT tax? A VAT tax is a value added tax on consumer goods. So essentially what's happening is when they get into these Spanish waters, the Spanish government basically has come out and said, hey, look, if all of our people that are on land have to pay this tax, people on the boat who are in our waters have to pay this too. And that's got a bunch of cruisers unhappy with NCL. And I'll tell you why they're blaming NCL for this in a second. Not only does this VAT tax apply to drinks while you're in the Spanish territorial waters, but it also applies to all-inclusive dining packages. So if you've pre-purchased a dining package right, because you don't want the extra fees while you're on board and you just want to take care of it beforehand, they're also getting charged this fat tax on those dining packages based upon the you know, cost of their food. So it's a 10% tax based upon the cost of the food or their drink. So in addition to prepaying, they're also being charged additional fees in order to have those same services in which these passengers feel they've already paid for. Now here's why people are upset with NCL. So the government and this new tax kind of went into effect the spring of 2023. So it's not like it just came out, you know, a few days ago or whatnot. It got implemented in spring of 2023. I don't have the exact month or date, but it got implemented in spring. But what's happening is these passengers are complaining because it doesn't seem like it's very clear on NCL's side of things. Um, and I don't know because I haven't personally looked, but, you know, from reading the stories and hearing from these passengers who are being charged, 
they're not finding out about this additional VAT tax until after the they've already purchased their prepackaged you know plans so after they've already bought their free at sea package which includes their drinks and Wi-Fi or they've already purchased their all-inclusive dining package it's not it's not until after they've already bought them that NCL is sending in an email after the fact saying, hey, by the way, these taxes may not be included, so you're going to have additional taxes on top of it. So I think the real gist here is I think that these passengers feel like NCL should be way more upfront and it should be in, you know, um, uh, um, big, bold letters. Well, they should put it in huge black letters. Um, you know, to, to say, hey, look. This does not include special taxes or whatever, or you may be, based on your itinerary, you're gonna be charged extra, whatever. Because maybe that'll play into somebody buying it, right? Now look, 10%, do I think that's a lot? Not really. When you think about going to a restaurant, at least here in America, um, you know, if you get great service, and tipping is getting out of control, mind you, but really you're tipping 15 to 20%. So 10% off of a $4 drink is 40 cents. I get how that can add up. Um, but, you know, I, I, and I don't agree if they're not being upfront with it until after the package. I certainly think they should be more upfront with it if that's not happening. So I think the passengers are upset for a couple of reasons here. I think one is because they feel like because they've prepaid their packages, uh, they prepaid their dining package, all that stuff. They've already taken care of that up front. They feel like all of those extra taxes should be included and they should have already taken care of it. Um, there's also a little bit of a gripe out there that says, you know, why don't you just bake it into the cost of the package? But a lot of people have come out and said, hey, look, I don't think they do that because they're afraid people won't buy the packages because it would increase the cost of the packages, right? Um, and I think the second thing is they don't feel like NCL is upfront about it enough to say, hey, look, before you purchase, right, almost like right before you hit pay, maybe there should be something that says based on your itinerary, you're going to be charged extra taxes, do you still want to proceed, whatever the case may be. So I feel like there's a couple of things at play here. Uh, nonetheless, the, the passengers are upset. Um, they feel like you know NCL should be a little bit more upfront or they shouldn't even have to pay these extra taxes. They've paid their dues, they've paid their fares, they prepaid, all that stuff. And they feel like it's way out of line to have to try to kind of double up on the fee that they've paid. Um, all in all, let me know your feelings and your thoughts on this. Do you feel like it's kind of overreach? Do you feel like NCL should just bake that into the cost of the actual uh, package or do you feel like it's not a big deal? Um, let me know your thoughts down below on, on kind of what you feel about the taxes. But I saw that story, thought I'd bring it to you. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, and I've never sailed NCL. I heard they're, uh, you know, I've heard nothing, nothing but pretty good things about them. So um, they are on our bucket list to sail. But um, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Let me know, would you be upset with the VAT tax um, or do you just think it's normal you know, it's just business as normal. And if that's what the Spanish authorities want, that's that's kind of just the rules. Um, let me know what you think NCL should do. Yeah, I just thought I'd bring that story to you. I saw it and I was like, you know, that's kind of a kind of an interesting thing. So if you're going on a European cruise and you're gonna be sailing in the Spanish uh, territorial waters um, anytime soon, uh, be prepared to uh, pay those additional VAT taxes. Um, and so um, don't be surprised by them. Make sure you guys do your research. Um, that's the biggest thing we always tell people too, is like before you go on your ship, uh, before you go on any vacation, do your research on where you're going, what policies might be in place, things like that. Um, or if you don't have, if you've got a great travel agent, make sure they know what they're doing. But um, you know, try to do as much research as you can um, so that you're not surprised or blindsided um, after the fact. So that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you have a beautiful Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, Friday. So. Peace.